joining me today. Today we're going to talk about before insert and before update flow and we're also going to look at how to create one before insert flow. What are the different limitations of before update or uh, before flows in general and why should we start thinking about moving from processes and workflows to flow. So um, let's start with a use case and I can explain all these different points along the way. So uh, one common use case is setting the opportunity name based on different fields, um, different uh, decision, different criteria. So let's say I want to name my opportunity based on the record type or based on the stage name, or maybe I want to concatenate the opportunity uh, account to the opportunity name. That's a very common one. And then maybe I also want to set the close date based on the stage name. If the stage is something like value proposition, I want to close date 30 days from now versus if it is negotiation, I want to uh, have the close date to set to tomorrow or today, anything like that. So the common thing, if you notice, is we are focusing on the same record. So anytime you have rec updates happening on the same record, before insert is, is a good way to do that. The reason being, and we all, if you are coming from a programming background, you always already do that in a before insert or before update trigger. That's exactly why we use it. We don't need to use an extra statement or extra update or insert statement for that. What I mean by that is when, you, when you're creating an opportunity and if you have a workflow action to do that, when you create an opportunity, the opportunity first gets created and then um, the system then goes back to that opportunity and updates that stage or close date or the name based on what you provided based on the action. In this scenario though, uh, before even that happens, you will, before even uh, the insert happens, the system pre-assigns those values, uh, like the name and the close date, whatever you define, and then inserts everything together. So you're not having an extra update statement. And this is very important when your org is very complex and you are probably running into CPU time limit errors or other errors from processes and this can be one, one way to solve it. Um, and this is probably not one all fit solution, but definitely something to look into. All right, with that said, I'm gonna start creating a flow to just show you how easy and simple it is uh, for this use case. So we're gonna select record triggered flow, hit edit and record is created. I'm gonna leave the record is updated because I wanna talk about some limitations on that one um, or the flow in general. And before this record is saved is what we are focused on today. Choose object. So choose opportunity. Hit done. And I want to set the opportunity name. Set name. So you notice we have a record variable now. So hit record dot name equals. I want to define the name using a formula. So what, what formula does is you, it gives you flexibility to add concatenate things to it. So new op name data type is text and I want to say test flow plus it's a string so we're going to use text of pick this value that's why I'm using text and all the same rules applies the only difference is in the flow you don't have that nice formula builder for you. So record dot stage name hit done and that's my new opportunity name. Connect this together. Another um, while I'm this at this point, I also want to discuss a good use a uh, good practice is to keep all your actions in the same flow. So if there are multiple updates happening in the same flow, even if they have different conditions. I would highly encourage to put them in the same flow because it streamlines the process, it helps it easier to debug as well. So, but the way you can do that is using a decision within that flow. So maybe I want to decide the close date based on stage. So I'm gonna say stage equals negotiation. And when the stage is negotiation, record dot stage, uh, negotiation I want to set the close date to today 
and it could be today plus seven days or whatever uh, you have whatever the use case you might have record dot close date and I'm going to just going to say current date and if you have other use cases you can just create a formula just like how I did for the name so current date click done and then you can just connect this together so in this way you can actually have multiple assignments in the same flow so all of those fields are getting updated before, when the opportunity gets inserted so hit save uh, opportunity insert before hit save okay I figured that would happen um, hit one I'm just gonna rename it so there appears to be formula expression is invalid um, so let's look at that that's very important um, whenever you're creating formula it usually tells you what's wrong so what's wrong here is I'm not using quotation on the quote even if it is string so super helpful that it gives me that error exclamation mark here so hit save again and that should go away great now activate it let's test that out real quick so I'm gonna say clone this opportunity name it something else different so that's the user entering whatever name they want and then the close date is I'm just gonna set 31st and the stage we pick in our decision was negotiation or review hit save and it should auto update that name test flow negotiation review and the date is updated to today and it all happened uh, at the same time like we didn't have two different uh, and you can see it right here so the stage history actually will tell you whether or not so the record was actually created with that close date not with 731 that I initially had so it only inserted it once there was no update happened so that's a great way to look at it as well okay um, now let's move on to the limitations which I want to talk about so it can't be triggered with delete so if you have something firing on delete that the triggers are the only way to do that as of now um, and this is the big one um, is changed prior value and is new cannot be used in flow what that means is if you have processes where you're using this condition so let's say if the stage is changed from um, negotiation to close one do this right that's a because you don't want to fire the flow for every situation and if you just completely come here and say okay I just want to fire on stage name equals close one or proposal or whatever it might be um, and if, you, if it's the run flow is before the record is and if it is updating or firing every time the record gets updated that's not really good either because then if you're sending an email alert the people are going to get emails every time somebody edits something on the opportunity if it's meeting that condition so this limitation is definitely big and if you still want to use the flow you can still do it what you would do is um, use these conditions inside the process and then in your action launch an auto launched action an auto launched flow to make those updates so that in future and I think few releases from now it might be available in flow then you can just update that flow to a before tri a record triggered flow that's one of the ways you can get ahead of it um, but still that's a really big limitation um, that's why before insert doesn't really matter because we don't use this formula in before insert a lot so you can still uh, happily convert your processes if they are firing on record insert only and you're updating fields on the same record um, and we're going to talk about after update in, a ne in the next video so we'll talk about that later um, schedule actions is one of also the limitations that I noticed um, you cannot schedule actions from flow so if you have those in, in the process let them be in the process for now um, you cannot access fields one level deep without querying uh, what that means is for example if I wanted to set the opportunity name based on the account name so record dot maybe I wanted account 
So I don't have that. I cannot use account.name here. I have to query them separately. So I can query account using that account ID and then use that account name. So there is a workaround, but it adds an extra query, um, which is not a big deal if your system is lean. Um, that's all I have in terms of limitations, and I'm gonna make another video on how to use after update and after insert flows. Uh, so thank you so much for watching, and please let me know if you have any questions.